Hello, welcome to my uh, messy desk. Uh, thanks for watching. I uh, wanted to have a little chat about, well, I actually wanted to talk about this, this object here. Um, but I thought I'd start the story because um, I've played with this mechanism in a few different forms and it all started here. So what this, what this mechanism is, is it's a, uh, they're called Longworth Chucks. And uh, this is one that I designed. I followed an online tutorial about how to draw uh, this up in um, Inkscape. And uh, it's made out of two discs, and both the discs are the same, but one is kind of flipped over. Um, yeah, and then they're mounted together just with uh, these bolts. This one uh, I drew up. It's the first one I designed, and I laser cut it... Um, I actually laser cut it at Pontio Innovation Centre in North Wales before it had even opened when we were all in having a, a training from, uh, I think, Epilogue, the laser cutter manufacturer. So I, it was one of the first things that was laser cut uh, in the Pontio Innovation space. And it's been a completely addictive desk toy ever since. I've never really kind of used this one for anything other than I keep picking it up, I keep tightening the nuts and bolts up that need a bit of thread locker on it, and I uh, play with it a lot because it's a really addictive mechanism. As you can see, it kind of self-centers. Um, so these four jaws travel in. You can design them with more jaws, six, eight, you know, lots and lots of different amounts of jaws. Um, and I think one of the, I, I don't know whether it's the original use, but the place where you see these get used a lot is with wood turners. Obviously much larger and much, much better built. And they, they are useful because they can grip internal uh, in so the inside of bowl objects or they can hold a bowl sort of within the jaws or they can use the jaws internally externally and they're good for holding sort of non uh, uh, sort of you know like non sort of cylindrical stuff more like kind of bowl shaped objects and stuff so that's where they get used so that's that's where it all kind of started um yeah so then um recently I used the long with chuck as part of this tool which I made which is a tool that helps me mark um, equidistant marks around objects which is sort of like dividing uh, in machinist terms this uh, little doohickey has been laser cut again and you can see it's the same mechanism in fact a lot of it is the same drawing um, it's a bit chunky I've not used it for a while it needs all tightening up but the the idea is is that the centering mechanism um, you can put a tube over here and you can rotate this out to grip it and then the bottom wheel is made uh, in the same way, but I've made it a gear with 60 numbered teeth. And then I can kind of index the workpiece or the tube uh, using these little locks. I can index it through a known amount of degrees. So if I start off at zero and then move 15 to the zero point, then if I keep doing that, because there's 60 um, teeth, I'll get like four markings around it. And then I've just got this simple V-block arrangement that you can slide in like a pen or or something uh, ascribed to kind of mark um, the tube. So um, it has really useful little applications in kind of work holding. But I've always had this idea, and it's only this week that I uh, decided to do anything about it. Ever since this one, I thought oh, it'd make a really good kind of uh, sort of gripping mechanism. So I wanted to see if I could make one that would uh, work with a servo turning one of the discs so that it automatically kind of um, can, can move and open and close its jaws. So um, I, uh, I, it was a funny story. I was going to make this out of plywood as well, but I, um, I, I got it all into FreeCAD, as you can see here. I got it all into FreeCAD and uh, I had it all set up, I did all the tool paths, and then I realised that um, the, the the next day, which is when I would have chance to uh, CNC it, and my CNC is in the house, I, I had... Um I had, uh, I was, well, I spent the morning waiting for somebody to ring me back about something. So I didn't want to put the machine on because I don't like leaving it um, unattended. And I like to wear ear protection and stuff. And it's so loud that I couldn't, you know, people couldn't ring me. And also then I had something being delivered. So I realised that day. But it's the beauty of CAD uh, is that I realised, oh, do you know what? It wouldn't take me that long to actually, instead of uh, using the same objects in FreeCAD that I'd already kind of got sorted, um, just, just, chuck it out as an STL and 3D print it, which is much quieter, and I'm happier to leave my 3D printer uh, uh, running without uh, my, my without me being present. 
Um, let me just turn this on and set it so that this robot doesn't drive off. Oh yeah, so um, it's currently just hooked up to the uh, MTV robot, which um, is that experimental robot I, I made for um, Hackspace magazine. So you can see, yeah, here we go. Uh, I've just got it hooked up to one of the auxiliary channels, so I'm turning a, a little knob on the uh, transmitter and it moves the jaws in and out and it does it rather well and um, which is cool the jaws could do with being a bit longer oh i've just set the robot moving which i was desperately not going to do um so yeah um it, it works quite well um i'd like to extend the jaws a bit and maybe i think it would even be better if there were some like soft squidgy jaws attached over the top so like i've put these hard 3d printed ones on that one but i was thinking of something quite spongy because that would make it a really good gripper but it's pretty good it's um you can uh, pick up quite fine objects with it oh if you if you miss sorry the camera's in the way and i can't see what i'm doing there we go so like picking up a small thin object off the ground is pretty easy and um i tell you what's really nice about it is that um because of the self-centering action of the jaws, it kind of sort of gathers small objects into the centre of it really well. So it's kind of very much like we would do with our hands, that we would kind of draw it together before we kind of pick it up. So yeah, um, I'm going to go a bit further with this. So I'm going to uh, refine the jaws a little bit and then think about how I could maybe articulate it. Uh, maybe just something as simple as having it mounted on the back of the robot so that you can you can drive it over something, have some servo mechanism that lowers it down and then obviously the servo mechanism that, that, that tightens and releases the jaws. Um, it would be nice to have all different degrees of freedom um, but I think that might be the next kind of uh, point just to make it go up and down. So yeah, um, I'll chuck the uh, design files. Well, the design files for this are already up on Thingiverse uh, and I'll chuck uh, some design files files up for this um at some point on thingiverse and uh, yeah thanks for watching take care bye bye